Hey guys, it's Jenny and Chiaki with the Go Box Art Crate, and we are gonna paint an emperor penguin today. Okay, so I brought on my little puppy today because she's staying with us. In this studio, she really wants to say some some out loud stuff. What are you saying? You're saying you want to paint a baby emperor penguin? No, you're saying you want to get down. I know it. So her fur is a lot like the fuzzy stuff we're gonna paint on the baby penguin, and she's ready to go run around the studio. So I'm gonna hand her off. But I'm glad I got to show her to you. So let's uh let's talk about baby emperor penguins. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. You can see my happy face palette. I decided last minute to do that because why not? It's fun. <laughs> so the colors we're going to use today are very simple. We're going to use black and white. This wonderful, wonderful <laughs> turquoise color that I love. And then red. And we don't use a lot of red, not much at all. In fact, I probably gave myself way more than I'm actually going to use. Let's put that aside. Let's talk about what else we need. So you need your canvas or whatever surface you're gonna paint on. You can use paper, you can use cardboard, you can use, uh, use, I paint on rocks sometimes, and as long as it's dry. And then brushes, you want, uh, I, I use three. I use a, a large, medium, and small. And then I have my paper towel or old paint rag and an old cup filled partway with water. You don't need to fill it all the way because if you spill it, that's more to clean up. So I always just fill it up a little bit because <laughs> I do spill once in a while. Let's have a look at an emperor penguin. Look at that. How cute is that? See how see all that fuzz I was talking about? Just like Chiaki's coat. Look at that cute face. They are so adorable. All right, I'm gonna set that aside. And we're gonna start by mixing a very pale icy blue color to sketch out the penguin even though I know the penguin is um, black and gray and white. So it seems kind of funny to sketch it out in a bluish color, but I promise you, I'm just picking up a brush that fell on the ground. Okay, I promise you it's gonna work out good. So I'm gonna take my medium brush and I'm gonna dip it in the water and just really lightly brush it back and forth across the bottom of the cup, just to loosen up the bristles, dry it off. Make sure you get this little metal part dry because sometimes you'll get a cling on drop of water that will suddenly splash on your canvas and it creates some problems. So I try to remember to wash that off. Let's mix a little bit of this turquoise blue to the white. Not all the white, we wanna save a lot of the white. So see how this ended up making a really light color compared to that. That's because we wanna be able to cover up this. We'll draw it on, but we're gonna cover it up with other paint. Oh, it looks like my palette is crying. I'm so sorry, I wrecked your face. Okay, let's set that aside. And we're gonna draw a couple shapes. Everybody knows how to draw circles and ovals, and that's all we're gonna draw. So brush-wise, if you have kind of a big medium brush, you might draw with the smaller brush. So I think I'm gonna do that. So I'm just gonna set this aside. Uh, you know, I'm actually gonna set it in the water because I probably won't use it for quite a while. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, dampen this little tiny brush. I like to mix with bigger brushes because mixing paint with the little brushes will kind of fray your bristles after time. So I try to avoid if possible, although I still find myself occasionally mixing with my small brush. I try not to. We're gonna draw a circle right here, about the size of a big grapefruit. And just kind of in the middle of the canvas, just sketch it out. If you have to make it bigger, no problem. Just draw right around it. If you have to make it smaller, no problem. Just redraw it. Everything we're doing right now gets completely covered with paint. So it allows you to fix many little mistakes. So you can see my circle, I'm just sort of sketching it in and I'll be able to fix that up with paint later. So yeah, it's about the size of a, a grapefruit, a big grapefruit. And then the body is just an oval shape, but I, I have it come out here and here. So he looks like he doesn't have a, 
a neck. He's just very squatty. Because look at this guy. There's not really a neck so much. I mean, there's kind of one. But it looks really cute to do it this way. So I'm just making a big oval. I want to leave enough room down here for feet. And we don't, we aren't going to show much of the feet, just some little claws poking out. And again, just an easy loose sketch that you can redraw if needed. We'll be adding some wings. <laughs> right now, this could become anything. We could turn it into a rabbit. We could turn it into a cat, we could turn it into a dog. I uh, turn it into, give me some suggestions in the comments if you're able to comment on there. What do you think that could become? A snowman with only two snowballs. <laughs> okay, let's wash the brush. We will give him wings, but that's gonna come later. We're gonna paint the background right now. Okay, so let's take the biggest brush now, this one here. And color-wise, you can do lots of different things for the background. I currently have a pencil mark on there. You can uh, do any color you want, but I'm just gonna do sort of like he's in an ice cave. So I'm gonna mix a little more blue to white, just lighten it a, just a touch with the white. And I see how I kind of dab my brush up and down? I like kind of a streaky mix. Make sure you save some white. You'll need it for the gray that we put on the penguin later. So I, I like a streaky mix where I don't over mix and make one solid color. If I look close or here, if you look close, I've got swirls of white in there along with the turquoise. Maybe I did over mix it a little bit more. Here, that's better. Look at that. That's kind of what we want. And then I'm going to take, and the brush strokes I do, I like to do this kind of brush stroke around, at least until we get close to the penguin, which that's when we'll have to sort of change our brush stroke a little bit. So the reason I'm doing this kind of brush stroke is I like it to look like he's in some kind of rounded snow cave or snow den. And you can occasionally take just, just white on your brush and streak some of that in there so you have streaks of color. I always like that look. Then as I get close to the penguin, it's okay if you overlap into the body a little bit on accident because it all gets covered up. I'm just gonna keep saying that. It all gets covered up. <laughs> Promise, it all gets covered up. Around the head. I play the game Animal Crossing a lot. I probably mentioned it on my other videos. It's really been nice during um, the quarantine because you, a lot of times are just like, you're not going out anywhere too much and things get a little boring at home sometimes. Sometimes I, look at this, I took just plain turquoise and streaked it in there. Sorry, I should mention. Sometimes at home I, I'll paint, but sometimes I just want to sit down and relax and play with my digital friends. <laughs> so that's where I, I load up Animal Crossing on Nintendo Switch. And um, anyway, the, what I was getting at is the snowmen that we're building right now in January on uh, Animal Crossing look like this, where they've got the, the two snowballs rather than three. And they, uh, they usually have a lot bigger head though. When I've made it with a small head, they get real mad. <laughs> and they tell you about how imperfect they are. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. So I try really hard to make them into the perfect snowboy. That's what they're called, snowboys. And uh, because I don't want it to say, to lecture me on how imperfect it is. <laughs> so just paint around here, keep working. And I'm gonna, in a minute, I'm gonna have Paul give us some, some facts about emperor penguins, because this will be a little learning experience. There's a lot of things, new things you might learn about emperor penguins. And I'll get us going on the next step, but then I'm going to have Paul, who is my, uh, he's my go box painting partner and my husband. He's going to tell us a little bit about Emperor Penguin. So let's wash this brush. 
And your little oval shape kind of reminds me of an egg. It might have gotten a little squished from painting the background in. That's fine. We're going to paint outside, or like we're going to clean up the edges with this color we make next. So we're going to wash this brush, clean it off, and dry it off. Make sure you dry off the little metal part really good. Sometimes I'll just take it and I fold my towel and then I just pull it out from under. And let's make a gray color. So let me pull up my photo. I like that I can just use my phone. See, see how it's kind of a lighter gray on the body? And it looks like the wings are actually a little lighter. I don't know if it's in, um, maybe it's just the sunlight getting on there, but we can do that. We can make them a little lighter. I'll probably look at some other pictures too. So let's make a medium to light gray, which black and white make gray. You can also make gray with this color in black, but uh, the black really overpowers the white. So I'm gonna scrape off a little white, plop it down, about that much. And then just a little bit of black at a time. So I just used the corner of my brush and picked up a little bit. You see how fast it turns it gray? I think I want it maybe a touch darker than that. Just go a little at a time. If it ends up too dark, just mix some white back into it. Real easy fix. And this one too, you can do sort of a blot blotted mix where you've got light and dark color in there, kind of marbled together. And we're just going to paint in the body and you can use the, the thin edge of your brush to kind of clean up the edges. We'll be adding wings to the outside of this. And you want to leave the head white and we're just going to fill in the whole egg shaped body while Paul tells us some facts about emperor penguins. So you can go ahead, Paul. All right, yeah, I've got a couple of interesting facts about emperor penguins. Ooh. Emperor penguins are the tallest penguins that live on Earth. They can stand anywhere between three and a half feet and just a little bit over four feet tall. Wow. To give you an idea of how tall that actually is, if you look at the doorknob on your bedroom, those are typically about three feet tall, so they're even taller than that. Wow. That's tall. That's much taller than I would have thought. They also live to be about 20 years old, which surprised me. Whoa. That's a long time for any bird to live. No wonder they're called emperors. <laughs> Do they live longer than any other penguin? There is another type that lives 30 years. Huh. I did hear uh, that maybe... Did, did you say they're the largest penguin? Yes, they are. Yes, I, I believe I read that. That they are the largest penguin in existence. How about this, Paul? Where do they live? They primarily live on icebergs and other packed snow and ice in the Antarctic, which is at the bottom of the Earth. Yeah, the bottom of the Earth. Yep, by the South Pole. Wow. Cold place to vacation. I don't think you can actually <laughs> vacation. I don't think so either. <laughs> Unless you're a research scientist. There's a lot of research scientists and people who study penguins who live there. Well, you'll have to look up and tell us what else lives there. Is that where polar bears live? No, polar bears live in the Arctic. Well, I learned something too. The Arctic is about as far away from emperor penguins as you can get, as it is all the way at the top of our planet. Oh, they live up with Santa. Okay. Well, cool. I am shocked to find out how tall they are. I am just a little bit over five feet tall. So that means if they're getting up to four feet tall, it's like, hey, friend. <laughs> they're same height almost, really close. Okay, so there we've got our, you can already kind of see it's it's looking sort of penguinish, kind of. Let's wash our brush. Clean it off really good because we want to make sure that we, um, we want to make sure that we don't have any kind of gray in this next color we make. Which actually is, we're not making the color. We're using, we're going to be using pure white with this in a little while. I think. I'm just, I'm just designing this as I go, honestly. <laughs> I have a, a painting I designed 10 years ago in our studio which is this exact painting, but I haven't looked at it in a long time. I'm going on memory. Hopefully it won't fail me. <laughs> so I'm washing my medium brush off. 
And let's see here. I actually want to have us go back to our really pale minty color. And you might even make it lighter than, than it was originally. To, the color we used to sketch everything out. This is something that you don't need to see very well, but we, we need to see it, but it doesn't have to be super uh, dark because it, it needs to be painted over. So I'm gonna take my littlest brush in that light minty color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down on the face and here's the middle of the face, right about there. I'm gonna drop down just a little bit below middle and I'm going to make a little horizontal line. This is probably about an inch wide on mine. This is gonna set up where, uh, when I, I'll show you what we're drawing. So see that, see that right there? The little black and it's gonna go up and around. We're gonna draw that. So this is just gonna be like, it looks like a funny little smile. Wow, what are we painting? What is this? It looks so funny right now. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and go up and meet up with the outside edge. So it's like we're making giant eyes when really we're not, we're just making the way that face feathers are colored. Now I know that their faces end up being pure black when they're older, but when they're little, they have the super cute white bits on their face. So when I come in with white paint, I'll be able to cover all of this. Cause you can see like this looks really big and this one's a little squished. And it's only because I need to cover over this line with white paint. But we want to sketch this in so we're ready and know what we need to paint. Okay, let's go ahead and wash our brush. Clean it off. And, you know, we're going to paint a little snow base for our penguin to stand on. So this time we're going to use our biggest brush in pure white. And here's what I'll do. I'll see if Paul has some more penguin facts while we're coloring this in, this ground in. So let's go ahead and jump up a little bit above the bottom. So maybe about here. And I'm just going to draw a little bumpy line. And then one over here too. If your canvas is too wet, if all of this is too wet down here to apply fresh paint on, you can have a parent help you hair dry the canvas or just pause the video and wait. Um, five minutes or so. Mine's nice and dry. Well, it's there's a I can see right here there's a little bit of wet paint, but it's okay as we're painting this in to have some of that wet bluish color mix in because that just when I paint snow on other paintings I always mix a little blue into it because it just kind of gives it that icy tone. So let's fill this in and let's see what Paul has to say about emperor penguins. Nothing. <laughs> He's researching it quickly. <laughs> I don't have additional emperor penguin information yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs> okay. I did find out some interesting penguin information. There are no penguins that live at the North Pole. Wow, so they're all southerners. Yeah, there are some penguins that live at the Galapagos Islands, which is right at the equator, which divides north and south, but they all still live in the tropical southern part of the planet, and I bet they enjoy surfing just like that movie Surf's Up. Oh, I love that movie. We actually own that movie because our kids, our kids are older now. One's a teenager and one's 20, and they loved that movie, so we own it, and uh, I totally forgot about that. Great movie. He's a different kind of penguin, though. I can't remember. Yeah, he's a rock what... hopper. Okay, let's check into in his name. I can't remember his name either. He's Cody Maverick. I love that they filmed it kind of documentary style. <laughs> so now our penguin's sitting pretty on a little soft bank of snow and starting to look cute, starting to look more like a penguin, even though there's no face yet. Let's wash the brush. So one of the things I like to do in the background, because we have all this space, all this empty space, you can leave it like that, but I like to do extra stuff. So I'm going to clean this off. One of the things I've done in the past, in fact, the, the one I told you about that I designed years ago, I did big white like snowballs of different sizes just by taking my little brush and white paint and just swirling it around. And obviously, if he's in a snow cave, it's not gonna be snowing inside, but what we'll say is he's standing at the entrance 
and there's little snowflakes falling or blowing in. So you can do the snowball thing. I'll show you how you do that. Take the little brush and white, but I'm also gonna show you how to paint actual snowflakes. These are kind of fun and they look really pretty and cute. So let's do a few of those. Make sure you leave some room though, because I'm gonna teach you how to paint actual six or uh, yeah, six pointed snowflakes. <laughs> I almost said four pointed, I'm like, what? <laughs> snowflakes have six sides, no more ever. So some of these, depending on how light your background is, they might not show up super great. Like I've got some right, right here is very pale, but I like that. I like having the, the different um, tones. So some will be softer and others are gonna be more intense. That's probably pretty good. Maybe they're, maybe the little baby penguins are having a snowball fight and these are all the snowballs being pelted at this poor guy. <laughs> Let's paint some cute snowflakes. So you wanna use your littlest brush for this. You know, I'm gonna clean it off, even though I'm gonna be using white, because of what I was just doing, the paint got kind of blobbed around the tip of the bristles. Clean off the little metal part. And here's what I like to do. I like to pinch the bristles together as much as possible so that I get a nice delicate snowflake by using a pointier brush. So we'll take and pick up a little white, not a whole lot, maybe grab too much. See how much I have on my brush? Very little actually, it's just at the tip of the bristles. And I draw a straight line and then I'm gonna draw an X through it. I'm sure you guys all know how to draw X's and straight lines, so then I have a five, or sorry, <laughs> I'm like, I'm failing at all these um, snowflake facts. They have six sides. So we have our six pointed, one, two, three, four, five, six points on our snowflake. And you can leave it like that. Or we can dress it up further. Let's do that. So I'm gonna put some dots just by lightly swirling my brush around. I wonder how many snowflake points I'll say it has next. <laughs> I really want snow here in Oregon. We don't get much. We got a little bit last week, which was unusual, but it's always like half an inch and then gone. Okay, now I'll do, one thing you can do, you can flip your brush around and use the handle and you can just stamp it in your white paint and look what I can do. I can stamp cute little dots and they run, your brush handle runs out of paint much faster than the brush bristles. So I am constantly having to re -dip it in the paint. But look how cute that made that. I'm gonna show you another type of snowflake to make. We don't have to do too many of these. So let's draw our straight line with our X. Six sides. <laughs> and then I'll take and I'll do a little straight line at the ends of each of these. I love this kind of snowflake. It reminds me of the type that gets embroidered on like a knit sweater in Sweden or something. <laughs> and then if you want, you can use the handle of the brush and do the dots around here. And the other thing you can do to dress it up even more, you could do dots in between each of these little triangular slices. They're like little pizza slices. That sounds really good right now because I have not eaten lunch yet. And I love pizza. Okay, I like threes. I like things in odd numbers. And for this, you know, I don't want to load this up with a ton of snowflakes, although you can, it's not going to look bad or wrong, but I don't want to take all your time doing that. So I'm going to do one more snowflakes. I like odd numbers and I do a lot of things in threes on paintings. So let's do our straight line. And remember all snowflakes in the world, in existence, are completely different from each other, which is crazy. That's such a crazy thought. All right, what can we do with this one? Here's what I'll do. I like to do a little V shape at the ends of each of these. So obviously down here, you're gonna be doing an upside down V. I keep dragging my arm through the wet paint down here. 
I usually end up with a lot of paint on my hands and arms. That one's cute. All three different, and you can do the dots. The dots really do dress it up nicely. Doink, doink, doink. So here's a little factoid about emperor penguins. Ooh, we got some more factoids. Yay for factoids. What type of pizza topping do you think an emperor penguin would prefer on their favorite righteous pizza? Oh, let's see. I'm going to go with anchovies. <laughs> they pretty much only eat fish and squid. Wow, that's pretty cool. Well, they probably have bad breath. But that's okay. They're so cute. We'll forgive them for it. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and work on the face now. And it, we're going to do more stuff to here because we want them to look fuzzy and soft. And right now, it just looks like a gray ball. So let's take our medium-sized brush. If you ever feel like when I say, oh, let's use our medium brush or let's use our large brush, if you ever feel like you're going to be more comfortable and have more success using a different size, please do that for sure. Okay, so I'm going to paint now over the, the white areas. All of this becomes, all this is white fuzz. And I know it's already white because the canvas is white, but there's a lot of little things I want to cover. And plus, I hate leaving the canvas as the white. I like to have the paint there in place. So come right, or even slightly overlap your gray. So we don't have any weird just canvas space there. And depending on how dark you mixed your bluish color, the minty color that we drew everything on with, you might need to do a second coat. That's easy. We'll do it after it dries. I'm going to have to. I can tell already. We literally did a blueprint of the penguin. I've got some fun ideas to make this part look really fuzzy too. So by painting over the canvas, instead of leaving the canvas white, you also get some cool texture. You see brush strokes and you see, it's probably hard to see unless I lift it up. Look at that, you can see. <laughs> Dancing. Okay. One thing I'm going to do with my penguin later, a little bit later, it's optional. I'm gonna give him two little blush spots on his cheek because I think we've got, that's why I put the red on here because I think it would be so cute. <laughs> and I usually do that when I'm painting something for kids. I just love to, it's really fun and cute. Let's wash this off. Now we're gonna use pure black and we're gonna clean up the head. So either your littlest brush, maybe I'll draw it on with my littlest brush just for safety's sake and black paint. And very carefully, I'm gonna trace the top of the head. And if you need to change the shape that you drew on a little bit, you can do that here. Just make sure you end up painting over any weird lines. Right around here. I think this one needs to come down a little further too. Looks like he's wearing a helmet. <laughs> or has a headband on. Now we're gonna trace these blue lines and we wanna completely cover them up. So even go right to the edge of those lines. And your white paint is wet, obviously. So you might have a little smearage happen where it turns slightly gray. Don't worry about that. It's really easy to touch up with either black or white, whichever one makes sense in the spot you're painting. And along here. See how I made sure to go right to the edge of my blue outlines so that on the outside I'm it'll be covered and then you can see the blue outline there but we're going to paint the whole head in with black. So that'll be covered too. Okay I'm going to use my medium brush now to fill in the whole top of the head in this little nose area with the black paint.
Chiaki must be taking a nap. Is Chiaki taking a nap, Paul? Chiaki is absolutely taking a nap. <laughs> it got real quiet. She was making a lot of noise. So at her age, she acts just like a newborn baby, except for the biting. <laughs> the biting and the fangs. Um, she plays. Well, I guess a newborn baby doesn't play, but she's awake and then she sleeps a lot. Sleeps more than she is awake. And when newborn babies get older and become toddlers, that's when they're going to be <laughs> more, more bitey. <laughs> Bitey and play. So maybe she's more like a toddler, Paul. I think she's probably more like a toddler. Toddlers have been known to bite. <laughs> they have indeed. Okay, filling that head in. I love painting animals. So if there's any animal that you would like to paint, we welcome your suggestions. You can, uh, if your parent has a YouTube account or you do, you can type it in in the comments below. And we'll try and get Paul to do factoids along with it. That's kind of fun. I'll try and remember all these things. So I was on a website earlier. I think it was called, uh, let's see, what was it? Let's check my history. Oceanwideexpeditions.com. And it gave a lot of interesting facts about emperor penguins. And there was something I read briefly about when they jump, they jump up to jump into the water and it does something to their aerodynamics. Um, it was really interesting what I read, but it didn't stick apparently. <laughs> I had a lot going on with chasing the dog to show, the, I mean, to pick her up and show you guys. <laughs> okay, I'm washing the brush off. Look at that, looking like a penguin, so cute. So cute. Okay, let's go ahead now and put, we'll, we'll kind of outline where the wings are going to go. And then we're gonna paint some fuzz on here. If you feel like this needs a second coat of gray, you can do that anytime. Just make sure and pause the video so you don't get behind. I could probably put a second coat of gray on mine, but I'm not going to. Maybe the fuzz, fuzzy stuff I paint on there will help cover up the spots where you can see that it's kind of thin. I do sometimes kind of like where you can see the brush strokes too. Alrighty, let's see here. Let's pick up our smallest brush and we're going to make another gray color, a little bit lighter than this one. So I still have, this is all dry, but I still have the color there. So I can use that as reference. And you know, I'm gonna use my medium brush to mix it. So this time we want more white, less black. So it's just gonna be a little bit lighter, just like I showed you in the picture, the wings being a little lighter. Oh gosh, they're so cute. I'm just looking at other pictures. <laughs> yes, their wings are lighter because they, um, their wings and whole back are a lighter shade. So good, we're doing it right. I wanna show you this adorable picture. It is so cute, look at that. That is so cute. See the light wings. <laughs> and then I saw another one with them all walking. And I don't know if I can zoom in. Maybe I can. You can see their light wings go down their back. So obviously we're not painting the back, but we are going to paint the wings. So let's take probably your smallest brush. Now leave this one aside with the paint on it because we're going to use it in a hot second. Let's take uh, this littlest brush in the light silvery color you made. And how about this? How, where do we want to put the wings? How about it's going to come down like this? So, so from the side of the head here, and I'm going to make it go into the background just a little bit. So he looks like his wing is sort of flapping a little. 
Oh, the the show, the movie with the emperor penguin is Happy Feet. Remember that one? Yep. That was such a cute one. So I'm just going to try <laughs> to match that up. It might not be exactly the same, but maybe he's flapping one wing faster than the other. So so they're slightly different in shape at the moment. Um, see how this is? It's kind of like a leaf shape almost. If I had a point on this end, it would be a, a long leaf shape. Okay, so I'm gonna just try to come out on the same side here and down. They're not gonna be exactly the same. There's gonna be slight differences. I'm already running out of the paint color. I, I made such a small amount, silly. I'll have to make some more. So coming along the side here. And then look, you can make that little pointed part of the wing flip out <laughs> on the edge. That's really cute. Let's take this medium brush now, which had the paint on it, and I'm gonna fill that in. Make sure that you put your little brush in the water or wash it off so that it doesn't get left to dry with paint on it. That is a killer thing for your paint brushes to let the paint dry on them. Paint brushes in theory should last you a very, very long time if they're taken care of good. So these are just synthetic bristle brushes, which um, most people end up using for acrylic paint. Painters who are doing more in-depth paintings will usually use uh, like boar bristle brushes or things like that. But synthetic brushes, you can just wash with some, I just use liquid hand soap from the kitchen and warm water. And I take and I swirl it around in my hand with some soap and rinse it off. And then I always reshape it. So I pull the brush tips down to a point. So that when it dries, it's nice and reshaped. And then you're good to go for your next hundred paintings. Hopefully you guys are painting a lot. It's really fun and it's good for your brain. And the more you paint, the better you get. And a lot of that is confidence. So like when I say, we're gonna paint a leaf shape here, you instantly know how to paint a leaf shape because you've done it lots of different times. And so yes, yeah, most of, uh, like the painting troubles people have when they're brand new is, is confidence. But kids are great because kids just go for it. You guys are awesome. When I would teach kids um, paintings in the studio, I would say, let's do this. And I turn around and do mine real quick and look around. Everybody already had theirs done because they just go for it, which is super cool. Look at that, cute. Our little no neck penguin. But that makes him cuter. Let's wash the brush. And we're gonna take our little brush again. And this time um, we're gonna mix a bit of water with our light gray, which I've already run out of again. What is happening here? So I, I don't want a lot of water. We don't want it to drip. I just wanna thin it out just a bit. So it's not as thin as like water or milk, it's just a little bit thicker than that. And I'm using the tip of the bristles and I'm gonna come through from the chin down and see what I'm doing. I'm making a little flicking motion with the tip of the bristles and that's making fuzz or the suggestion of fuzz. So the baby penguins have down feathers. So those are their, their baby feathers that are super soft probably keep them nice and warm. And then they grow up and they get adult feathers. Maybe those have a, a certain name, I'm sure. And then they're ready to swim and fish on their own and eat anchovies on their pizza. And wreak havoc all over Antarctica. <laughs> That's pretty cool that they live, unless they, uh, let's see, I think I remember from the movies that their predator was like a elephant seal. Am I right? Paul will have to look that up. Their primary predator is actually called a leopard seal. A leopard seal, okay. That was in one of the movies. I think it was in Happy Feet. Yeah, I didn't even have to look that one up. <laughs> wow. <laughs> He just knew it off the top of his head. That's pretty cool. They are actually the most aggressive seal in the ocean. Are they the ones that are kind of uh, 
They're kind of scary looking, aren't they? They have a long neck and big teeth. Ooh. So yeah, the, the penguins will live 20 years unless they can't out swim or outrun their the leopard seal. Well, I can't imagine a leopard seal running very fast. It's more like flopping. But I bet they can swim really fast. I don't know that they actually kept them on land very often. That's what it happened in the movie. Well, it is a movie after all. <laughs> Who knows? Anything's possible. Those penguin movies were so cute. Just painting the snow makes me want to go home and watch those. And we own both. <laughs> Now that our kids are fully grown and have no interest, it's up to mom and dad to watch them. So I'm just covering the whole chest. I realize this takes a little bit of time. And I'm not really placing my brush strokes here. Some are overlapping other ones. Because that's, that's honestly, that's going to give it more of a, as natural of a look as possible with this sort of thing. And this is also buying us some drying time. We are, we are waiting for the face to dry. You know, I'm going to give a little shout out to one of our young painters who has done so many of our projects and her mom has shared projects with us on Facebook. And she is a six year old living in Devon, England. So I want to say, I hope you're doing this painting with us and having a good time. And I would love to see your uh how your painting turns out because you're such a good little artist i think it's so cool that you're doing that okay let's wash the brush i just thought of something else we could do in the background that would be cute and fun um remember how i was having us using the the handle of the brush to do the dots on the snowflakes you can do a little tiny dots all over like these are little tiny snowflakes I do this method for stars too. It's just adding something extra, some extra sparkle to the background without doing, you know, a lot of extra work. It's very simple. Cute. Love that. Let's give our penguins some feet. So let's look up. Let's look up and see what the penguin feet look like. I'm just looking at a picture. I remember how I painted them before. Oh gosh, that's so cute. Look at that. Look at those little feet. <laughs> He's stretching. That's <laughs> so cute. Okay, uh, here's another. Look how cute. I think we did a good job so far. It's looking pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and mix up a dark gray. It looks like their feet are kind of a darkish gray. I'm going to use the middle brush. And we're running low on white. If you need to use this color for your gray, I'll show you what that looks like. Let's see what kind of gray that makes. I think that would be nice, actually. It'd be a slightly different tone than what we've been using. So let's all do that, unless you want to use white. Pretty amazing that this makes a nice gray. This is about the color I want. I'm gonna make some more because I keep making too little paint. And this one, I, I don't want it to be streaky. I wanna really mix this one to one solid color because we don't really want blue streaks in the feet. Although there are birds that have blue feet, these guys don't. Let's wash this brush off. And because of the way our penguin is sitting, he's not walking or anything. This one's walking, so you see more of the feet. We're just gonna show a little hint of the feet poking out. Just looking, let's see if there's another picture to show you. <laughs> no 
okay. <laughs> Not really. Okay. Uh, let's take our little brush, the littlest brush. And here's what I'm going to do over here. So we need to do two feet. So make sure you're not doing it right in the middle. This is going to be off to the side. I'm just going to do one, two, three little claws. And then over here, I just try to repeat it as close as possible. Obviously, the way the feet are positioned, they're not always going to look exactly the same. One might be more squished under the body. I feel like that could have been over a little more. <laughs> I don't know how he balances. This is a very round penguin with pretty small feet. So let's fill those in. And just right along here, I just go with the curve of the body. If you accidentally overlap into the body, just make this color gray again and touch it up after this dries. That's the one thing um, you'll want to make sure anytime you touch up anything, you, you have to let, for the most part, let your paint dry. Because I've seen a lot of... Uh, Things happen where like someone will paint the eyes on in black and they try to cover it with white right away. And then what happens is you get what looks like a giant black eye because <laughs> it turns all gray and smudgy around and you need that color to dry before you touch it up. So use the hair dryer. Have your parent help you use the hair dryer. Or just wait it out. Or wave your painting up and down really fast. <laughs> Be careful if you do that. Don't want it even harmed. But honestly, the hairdryer works amazingly. It only takes like 30 seconds. All right, washing the brush. And speaking of eyes, are we ready? Yes, this is nice and dry. So make sure that your white here is dry. I do have a spot I want to touch up with a second coat. Oh gosh, I'm running out of white. Too many snowflakes, I guess. So this really isn't where the eyes are going to go. So I'm, it's not going to be a problem for me. If you're painting this over where your eyes are going to go, you'll want to dry that real quick. Otherwise, you're going to end up with gray smeary eyes. Maybe that's what you want. It's your painting. You can do it however you want. Okay, so there's different things that can be done with the eyes. Uh, my favorite way, like a lot of people do just round eyes. But why do you round when there's so many other shapes? So penguins actually have kind of um, almond shaped eyes, slightly almond shaped. Let me find a picture again. Thank God for Google. Here we go. This is a good one. So see the eyes? They're, they're shaped like watermelon seeds, actually. Very small, but that's part of what makes that face so adorable. And one thing I like too is the fuzz that kind of overlaps into the black, the white fuzz around the eyes. I don't know if you can see that there, but I will, I'll show you how to do that. So let's do a little watermelon seed shaped eyes. <laughs> okay, so let's take littlest brush. And what I do for this is I figure out where the eye is gonna go. So I'm just gonna kind of center it in this area. And first I do a little rainbow shape. Look at that, it's like it's winking. And then I'm gonna match it up over here as best as I can. It's never gonna be exact because that's really hard <laughs> to get it exact. So there, you can leave it like that. It's so cute. It looks like he's like having the time of his life. He's laughing and excited about something. But I'll show you how to, how to make an actual watermelon seed or shaped eye. Just, I do a reverse. So I have a rainbow and a smile. And then where the points meet, it closes off the eye and you've got your little, maybe lemon shape is the better, this is the better shape here, but I actually see them as kind of watermelon seeds because I think it's because of the, the black color and the size. All right, coloring that in. Rainbow and a smile. Happy eyes, happy feet. Okay, that's cute. That's really cute. <laughs> but he needs a mouth. And their mouths are, they're, they're black, I believe. But because of um, how hard and shiny they are, we're, we can paint it a grayish color. And it looks good. Let's look at the picture. 
Look at that one. That's adorable. See, this one has its eyes partly closed. It's so cute. But the, the beak is black. It's just the shine from the light source from the sun is making it look gray. So we're going to paint it kind of a gray. Probably a little bit lighter than your happy feet color. I'm going to use my littlest brush. So I'll just mix a little bit of white into this. Not a lot. And you don't need a lot of paint at all. So just pull some aside like I'm doing. And about this color, it's real close to the color of the body actually. And their beak is in this area. So I'm gonna draw an upside down triangle. I just make a little short line, it goes straight across. And then in a little upside down triangle shape. And I'm gonna fill that in. We're almost done. We don't have a lot left to do. You could technically be completely done right now, but I'm gonna show you some other stuff. While we've got this color, let's paint some little toenails, just a little tiny little dot or line at the ends of the feet. Same color that we made the beak out of. And wash the brush. For this next part that I'm going to show, like I said, you can be done now. You can sign it and love it and be done. But there's, uh, like I said, I'm going to go a little extra, show you some different things that will make it really cute. So the fuzz I'm talking about, see this around the face, how the white fuzz kind of overlaps into the black. There's even fuzz across the head, which you can do. It's a little harder, but uh, let's take the little brush in white paint. And I'm just, make sure this black is dry before you do this. I'm just gonna flick, it's almost like we're drawing little eyelashes. <laughs> it's the same brush motion I use when I draw eyelashes. So just flicking outward around as I go around this black shape. And a lot of times, because we're painting a really light color over a really dark color, it's going to need a lot of times it's going to need a second coat of paint. And what I do is I come through and it, you can see where it needs that second coat. You can see the line of the black. I literally will just dab some thick white paint on there. To just sort of eliminate that line. And as it dries, it will be less noticeable. The, the thickness of this. And you can do that. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see here. Just looking at this picture. Let's do that around this side. First, let's compare the two sides. Isn't that way cuter than that? I think so. We're upping the cuteness. And when you're doing this, if it's easier to flip your canvas around and pull towards you, I find that easier for me than painting upward. I must have encountered some wet black paint there that I didn't see. It's getting a little gray in here, but that's okay. That can be an unintentional shadow. <laughs> yep. Got some wet black in there. And yeah, just dab on your thick white paint if you have any line of the black line that's really super visible. So soft and fuzzy. Uh, let's go ahead and take black paint now. Wash the little brush. We're going to do the same technique. The black fuzzies, let's look at their face again. They sort of overlap into the white just a bit. So we'll take our little baby brush. And you don't want to do too much here because it can look like he has a funny mustache. So I'm making a little bit shorter brush strokes, not, not so big as these. 
just to kind of give it some texture and fuzz. And then if you want to do, I will show you, if you want to do the fuzz around the head, again, just like this, really super short brush strokes. And just flick up into the background as you work your way around. See that already? So cute. And same thing, if you feel like it's easier to pop your canvas upside down. And one thing uh, I try to do whenever I'm painting fur or feathers on any kind of animal, I change the direction of my brush stroke. So not, each one is not going to go straight up and down. Some are gonna be squished over to the side. Some are gonna be blowing to the other side. It just makes it look more natural. Like there's the wind blowing, picking up all these baby down feathers. And we're just kind of seeing the motion of that. Now, one thing I just remembered looking at this picture, and I remember we did it on our other painting. <laughs> I can't unsee a mustache now for some reason. I just can't unsee it. When I started painting, I was like, oh, a mustache. They do have like a dark strip that goes oops, under their head. And you can paint that in if you want. Uh, maybe I'll use the gray that I used with the feet. I, I have a little black on my brush. I'll just mix it right in because it can be a bit darker. And really light pressure. Just sort of dab around, almost like he's wearing a little collar. There we go. Let's wash the brush. A couple more steps. And then we're done. I don't know how long we've been painting for. A little over an hour, I assume. All right, let's 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 use our red finally. You can see way more red was put on my palette than needed. I'm gonna pull a little white aside. We're gonna make blush. If Now this is optional, you don't have to add it to it. Very little red, like this is all you need. That's all the red that we're gonna use in the painting. <laughs> Unless you decide to paint the toenails red. And I'll take my middle size brush and I'm going to dab a little dot of this color and then I use my finger and smudge it around in a circle. And you might have to repeat those steps. By smudging it around in a circle, it just sort of fades out the edges and looks so cute. I love that, that's adorable. Okay, let's do it on the other side. Dab it on, smudge it around. And again, dab it on. Smudge it around. That one got a little big. I guess they, they kind of match. I, I literally cannot un unsee the mustache. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> All right, let's do some quick highlights and then we're gonna sign it. So washing the brush. We don't need any more brushes except for our smallest brush. The eye highlights are so cute and they really make the penguin come alive. So I'll use the very tip of the bristles. Just poke it in, pick. Poke it in the white, pick up just a little bit. See that? See the small amount I have on my brush? I didn't glob it on there, just a little. In the upper right corner of each eye, I'm just gonna do a dot. Upper right corner of each eye. Already looks cute. And then just opposite it, so down lower left corner, I'll do another dot. Lower left corner, another dot. Look cute. And then uh, what I want to do now is highlight the beak. So pick a side. I would say this the high light source is probably over here. And I'm just going to do a little white shine down one side of the beak. And then you just have to sign it. You are the one who painted it. You are the artiste today. You are the Van Gogh. <laughs> I use my littlest brush to sign in any color you want. You know, we didn't use enough red here. So I'm going to mix a little bit darker pink. The other thing you can do is if you mix this blue with red, you get kind of a lavender purple color, which is pretty. And I'm, I'm gonna stir a little bit of water in here. Now, when you mix paint with a small brush, which I was saying earlier, I don't recommend doing too much. You end up, see how my whole entire, I don't know if you can see it, my whole entire brush bristles are coated with paint. We don't wanna do something really small like a signature with a brush that's fully loaded like that. So I'm gonna wash it off. 
dry it off really good. Kind of uh, refresh the tip of the brush with your finger by pinching it together. And then just dip the very tip of the bristles in your color you made. And I feel like I need a little more paint. And then just do whatever signature you want to do. I just do my initials over the years. I've developed into a little loop-de-loop. -loop. Uh, you can paint your name, but keep in mind the painting is more about the penguin, less about the signature. So uh, doing a giant one across the bottom is going to take up all the attention from your penguin. And he's kind of the star of the show or she. Um, but that's it. That is all. That was really fun. I enjoyed painting this and uh, it was fun to watch it come together and look at all the pictures and learn all the facts. And so I'm going to go back and say goodbye to you real quick. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you want to do more videos, you can click subscribe and you can click the little bell to get notifications for any upcoming videos that we do. The kids videos are super popular. We have several on our website and hopefully you guys keep painting. So we'll see you later. Bye. Happy feet.